Okay, so we just finished watching 200 cigarettes with uh, about every good actor from the 90s. Late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. <coughs> so. Oh, um, should list them off. I should list them off? Yeah. Uh, Courtney Love, Christina Ricci, Gabby Hoffman, who people nowadays don't remember. Martha Plimpton, who's amazing on Broadway. Uh-huh. Um, ben Affleck, Casey Affleck, Guillermo Diaz. Mm. Uh-huh. Paul Rudd, Jay Moore. I can't remember the chick who plays Bridget or the chick that plays uh, Hillary. Angela Featherstone. Uh-huh. Dave Chappelle. Ooh. What? Okay, that was the one I had my finger on that I thought you'd miss. Dave Chappelle? No, Disco Cappy. He's the okay. narrator. Yeah. And am I forgetting anyone? Janine Garofalo. Duh, Janine Garofalo and yeah. cameo by Elvis Costello. And that's pretty much everyone. You see Janine Garofalo with big hair. Worth it. I think she looked good with big hair. Mm-hmm. I think Courtney Love needs to dye her hair back to red. Personally, I like her as a blonde. And with eyebrows. I just don't get the thing where, like, they pluck their eyebrows out and then they paint them on and then, like, you can't see them. Like, That's the thing. They were just really, really fine and thin. They were there. Yeah, like, when you see a, a, a close-up. But when, when it's, like, far away, I'm just like... It's because she's really pale. She's pasty. Well, maybe, that's what makes her eyes stand out. Maybe it had something to do with, like, when you get your hair dyed, you need to do something about your eyebrows to match. Yeah, but if you're going lighter, which she isn't a natural bleach blonde, obviously. Okay. You can't bleach your eyebrows. Or well, most people, you can, but salons won't do it because it's too much of a risk that'll run into your eye and you'll go blind. So says my stylist. And I know that you're like gonna hate me for saying something bad about Courtney Love, but I think she could have done a better job when her head was on the bar and she was saying, oh, I, I can't believe how drunk I am. I think she, of all people, could do a better job of playing a drunk person. Really? You just had to yeah. stab her? Stab her. She's a goddess. Okay. Uh, she's one half of what I want to be in life. Well, it kind of came off like sarcasm a little. A smidge bit, yeah. Who do you think were the best people in the movie? And have this be... You can have a total of four people, okay? Uh, two for the best characters, and then I need two to for pick the best four? actor. No, you can have up to four. Up to four? I'd say Martha Plimpton... This uh, movie made me fall in love with her. Yeah, all of the, the different faces that she made. Everything with Monica. Yeah. Um, just her angry face, her pissed face, her sad face. Her dead face. Yeah. It was wonderful. And uh, Kate Hudson. Really? Yeah. You were kind of... It seemed like you were kind of hating on Kate Hudson. I was hating initially. on Kate Hudson going into this. But she did a good job. I can't fault her for. The and job this she... was one. This was one of the first movies that she did. Before yeah. this, she had only done like Desert Blue, which also has Casey Affleck. You were right about the shoulder pads, though. Casey Affleck and Christina Ricci. You, you can't tell them. if someone uh, is flat chested or not if they wear a jacket with like giant shoulder pads in it. Not to mention that the dress that she had underneath it had really, really fluffy, frilly trim. Yeah. And I have nothing to say about Kate Hudson's boobs. I've never care to look at them. Not much there to look at. Um, Unlike Courtney Love. Yeah. Who had some awesomely shaped boobs. Mm -hmm. Did you I, ever see I was impressed. People versus Larry Flint? Um, you see her naked. Well, she's dead, but you see her in a uh, jacuzzi. Naked. Dead. Yeah. With purple hair. Hmm. I don't know if there are any other nude Courtney Love scenes. She doesn't happen to have sparkles on her when she's dead in that movie. 
She might. Because cause I just, you know, watched three Twilight movies in a row, and now I'm, like, into, like, the whole uh, cold, walk. dead, and sparkly thing. Mm, she may have... That movie was from 1996, though, so she definitely beat Twilight to that. Yeah. I think she was nominated for a Golden Globe, too. Great movie. Anything with Courtney Love, you can't help... Like, that's the thing, she's such a... She's a fucking amazing actress, okay? I love her, love her in whole, but her... And she's a great ad, uh, activist, too. But um, her as an actress, phenomenal. You can't take your eyes off of her. She, she's she's totally a great sport, too. It's like during the roasts on Comedy Central that I've seen her. I have not seen and, any. Uh, especially during uh, the Pamela Anderson roast I, I mean she was she took a lot of jokes bashing her and she was a good sport about it when did that come out a few years ago but they they still rerun it on comedy central like four years ago five years ago yeah which would have been when america's sweetheart essentially tanked and she was overshadowed by linda perry so she had to take it I follow my Courtney Love. I heart okay. her. Okay. Janine Garofalo did not have a very large role in this movie. She did not. However, she's one of those 90s actresses that could. And I think that's why her name is on there. But it's an ensemble cast. And it wasn't that she... She may not have had that much screen time herself. But did you see all those mad woman posters that were plastered all over the scenes? <laughs> That was her. Did you see that? Yeah. There you go. So you still see her. I wonder if they actually put those posters over parts of, like, New York. Probably. Okay, now let's move... That would be some memorabilia right there. A Mad Woman poster. A fucking hell. What? Now that's something which I want to, like, browse eBay for. But I hate PayPal. You just add it to the list. Yeah. Um, speaking of stuff out of New York, did you let's go to continuity errors. What do you notice for continuity errors? Well, most of the continuity errors that I noticed were uh, pretty much fixed by the whole picture montage at the end called The Party. Okay. Uh, just the fact that uh, Kate Hudson's character ends up with the punk guy. Casey Affleck's character. Casey Affleck's character. Tom. I was like, where did that happen? Mm -hmm. And then the pictures fixed it for me. Well, they were all walking into the same party. Yeah. But I... It was a non sequitur for me. I, I just was not getting why they would be together. Okay. Um, for me, the continuity issues go with the setting mm -hmm. and the music. Now, I know that MTV Paramount, they had... Uh, Bob and Mark Mothersbaugh, I'm mispronouncing their name, the guys from Devo. Yeah. And also, as an executive music advisor, was Elvis Costello. Hence wait, his... wait, what, didn't this move, wasn't this set in, like, 82? December 31st, 1981, going, going into, into 82. 82. That's All the problem. music is, like, after that. A lot of the music is, like, a solid half, Okay. Oh. Um, such as in the club scene when they're playing Love is the Drug by Grace Jones. That's 1984-85, okay? Yeah. Um, the Kim Carnes, Betty Davis eyes, that's appropriate. I Want Candy, Bow Wow Wow, which played at the beginning, not necessarily in the movie, but the intro credits. But in the bar scene where they introduce uh, the bartender, Ben Affleck, um, who goes without a name... Uh, in the background, there's a TV on the bar. What is it playing? The music video for I Want Candy by Bow Wow Wow. Yeah. And I don't believe that came out until 83. And there are a couple other songs in there as well. Where it's just not right. And as much as I... This is my number one favorite movie of all times. I cannot give a stamp of approval to the very end... The songs that they have on the end credits, that being the Blondie uh, uh, medley of uh, Rapture, 
Maria and No Exit. Maria and No Exit shouldn't be on there. Yes, it came out at the same time which this movie was made, but still. And then the Harvey Danger uh, remake of Modern English's Save It for Labor, uh, Save It for Later. I can't approve of that either. They should have just had Modern English and older Blondie songs. Like, um, this would have been a good time for them to go back and get a lot of songs off of Auto American by Blondie, which came which came out circa date when this movie's supposed to be take taking place. Mm -hmm. And they're all Auto American is a freaking phenomenal album. They could have gone for those if they wanted lesser known Blondie songs other than, you know, the typical Heart of Glass BS. And also, if they were going to have a, an 80s song covered by a musician, why not use Courtney Love? She's in the fucking movie. But don't you think that'd be a little bit trite? Because personally, I hate it whenever somebody who is in the movie also happens to have their song in the movie. That's really? something that chaps my ass. I don't like it. I think that Hole could have pulled off Save It For Later just as well as Harvey Danger. It might have given it a, a, a fresh uh, look with a female vocalist. Or perhaps when they have uh, Girls Against Boys doing Boogie Wonderland in the club scene, that could have been yeah. Hole doing that. Hell, Oftemar, Melissa Oftemar, she released her solo album, and she could have done the vocals. You know? That would have been kind of interesting. Have a, you know, quasi-fake, well, post-punk, pre-death metal version of Boogie Wonderland uh, sung by Melissa Oftemar. That isn't cool. I like how Dave Chappelle is together enough to act in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in Half-Baked. As was Guillermo Diaz, who played uh, orange-haired Dave. He yeah. was Scarface. And Guillermo had, like, almost no speaking lines. Oh, he doesn't talk. That's a joke. He doesn't talk in the movie. I think he might have grunted when he when he was handling the beer. He had a donut in his mouth. Uh, yeah, because... No. <laughs> but then there's also when Casey Affleck is shaking him. Yeah. Oh, but there is when he wakes up and he's like... Because uh, uh. he kind of almost scored with the homeless check. Yeah. Mm. Guillermo Diaz. Very, very fine gay actor. One for my team. Who were your least... F okay, wait. You said that uh, Kate Hudson, you yeah. liked her role. Uh huh. You liked her role. Did you like her acting, or did you like her character? Um, they just worked well together this time. Okay. You know, I didn't find flaw with it okay. at all. Were there any people that you did not like, <sighs> acting wise or story wise? I would have to say. Uh, Angela Featherstone. Caitlin. And the woman playing Bridget. opposite her, Bridget. Who's uh, actually really popular nowadays. She wins like a lot of awards. I don't know her name. It's something which I can't pronounce. Anyways. The unpronounceable name that mm -hmm. isn't on the front of the cover. Uh, I'm not finding it. Mm. Anyways. Anyways, uh, completely did not follow that part of the story. Okay. It was... See, I'm drawn to them because Angela Featherstone's character, Kaylin, has a fantastic uh, ensemble. Great wardrobe. It's just like, for the pretty factor alone. Something which I give this movie a lot of credit for is how colorful it is and vibrant. Because it's really dark and dirty, yet it's bright and colorful at certain moments. It's hard to take your eyes off of it, and it was really well shot, except for the second part of continuity, which is when, like, Kevin and Lucy are in the taxi cab, and what do you see passing them? A white Ford Contour. Okay, 1996 white Ford Contour was not around in 1981, okay? Or when they're at a stoplight and you have, you know, the uh, Checker Marathon taxi cab, which is what Disco Cabby drives. And right next to it is a mid-90s Crown Vic taxi cab. That pisses me off. Like, well, they should have blocked off a couple streets. It's MTV. MTV could have had the money to do that. I also was not really understanding that thing on Bridget's head that was holding her braids down. 
like after she let her hair out at the very end of the mm-hmm. the film, she actually looked kind of pretty. But like with, the fro. with, with yeah, with the fro she did. But with with that thing on her head, I wasn't mm-hmm. a, the mini beret. With yeah, the black nut half veil beret, thing. half veil. Yeah, old lady hats. Yeah. But come on, they're all artists. A lot of something which is common is that this movie gets crapped upon because it's oh a story of shallow people going through their shallow lives, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I think that's funny, and it's not that incredibly shallow. At least when Martha Plimpton is playing the shallow, shallow person, it is hilarious. Martha Plimpton is amazing. Yeah. She needs to get more movie and TV roles. But keep in mind, this is a this and, is an MTV movie. And on the cover, she's like got her face covered up by her own hands. That's so wrong. She needs to be like the star of the movie. And that's the thing; it's hard to tell. Well, it's an ensemble cast. Okay? Yeah, but going forward, they should like really uh, sell the the performance that she gives. Okay. Not cover her face up on the cover. Actually, if you look at the back, that is what the uh, re-release of 200 Cigarettes front cover is. Oh. It's the little thumbnails of each actor and whatnot with, like, the blue background. And Martha Plimpton is at the top corner, right there. And the whole ensemble cast is what's sold. A lot of people always say that Gabby Hoffman's character, and, well, Gabby Hoffman and Christina Ricci, their characters are the most annoying. Were you annoyed by them? Um, a bit, yes. Alright. See, I love Gabby but Hoffman. I, I, I figure that those characters are supposed to be annoying, especially Gabby Hoffman's role is to be the annoying antagonist. And know? see, that's the thing. I thought that she had one of the stronger performances in this film. She was great. She delivered. She attacked each line when it was supposed to be attacked. It was great. Uh, I think Casey but, Affleck is a little bit weak near the. But end. against the accent of Christina Ricci, actually sounding like she comes from New York, Long Island, or yeah, Long Island. And I don't think Gabby Hoffman pulled that off as well. Perhaps there's a reason why you don't see Gabby Hoffman in movies anymore. Ooh. Uh, either way, she has a fantastic... 200 movie. cigarette burns. Well, um... What else? I could go on about this movie. It's, uh, this, to me, is, with the exception of the uh, issue with some of the music and the continuity when it comes to, well, that didn't exist there. Come on now. Um, this isn't a movie. A pl- if I could give it an A+, I don't believe in A+. Pluses. Um, it would get an A+, plus, but this is an A. This is a 90... 98.9% fantastic film. Uh-huh. To me. I adore it. I worship it. I watch... It's it's a tradition for me. I watch it every New Year's. Every New Year's? Every New Year's. On New Year's, I would give this an A. New Year's Eve. Unless, unless you are single and alone... In which case, I would give it, like, a C-. Because or it's just going to remind you how single and alone you are. Or, um, unless you're HIV positive, then it might remind you why you're HIV positive. <laughs> That's horrible. Or why, you ha- why you're a single parent, or whatever. Yeah. And I actually hated Jay Moore's character... But he's kind of buff, and with the blonde chest hair that he's rocking, kind of cool. Jay Moore was a better actor when he had long hair. Longer. When he had, like, the half pompadour. His acting sense has gone to crap. <clears throat> trying to think what else. Uh, if you're scared of Ben Affleck because you don't watch Ben Affleck movies, don't worry. He's a loser in this movie, so yeah, it's he definitely good to ignore had- him. The only person with less speaking is Guillermo Diaz. Really. Hillary? What about Hillary? 
Who? Who? Eight thirty. Oh yeah. I suppose. Or Elvis Costello. Yeah, Elvis. Cost- well, he has less screen time than anyone. I'm not sure if he's just in, in the in the pictures. And see, that's something something which pissed me off. They shouldn't have had Elvis Costello playing himself. This movie was made in ninety eight, ninety nine. 98. It came out in 98. And subtracting, you know, 17 years off of him, 17, 18 years off of him, doesn't work. They yeah. should have, like, gone out, found Jimmy Ray, who they could have picked up. One hit wonder, Jimmy Ray, are you Jimmy Ray him? Because he kind of looks like Elvis Costello. A young Elvis Costello. They could have just, like, dyed his hair and had him play Elvis Costello. That would have been good. Perhaps he would still have a career. As an Elvis Costello lookalike? In the entertainment industry, like, in front, Jimmy Ray is also an amazing singer. His okay. album is really, really good. Okay. Watch the movie. 200 Are you cigarettes. holding up a Mountain Dew can in front no, of No, I'm not. I, the Dew can is out of the shot. Okay. 200 Cigarettes. Great movie. 200 Cigarettes. With it's Mountain written by Dew. Chex. 